Well, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present our work here. So I will uh, uh, present uh, a recent development we have uh, done in our group in order to describe ionization of uh, molecules that we call the x code. Our, our motivation is to provide experimentalists with theoretical support to interpret experiments that are carried out with uh, attosecond and few femtosecond uh, laser pulses, uh, which are generated in, uh, through high harmony generation or in free electron lasers. And our intention is to, to see if by using these tools, one can get uh, um, an image of electronic and nuclear dynamics occurring in molecules and eventually to control it. So these light sources uh, contain photons that are very big, typically in the XUB and the X-ray spectrum ranges. And that means that uh, by absorbing just one of those photons, you ionize any molecule. And so you are in the, in the electronic continuum of the molecule. And also, since the pulses are very short, uh, the, 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 there is a very large bandwidth. And that means that uh, you don't populate only one or a few uh, continuous states of the molecule, but you populate a lot of them. So you must describe accurately practically the whole continuum of any molecule. Um, furthermore, uh, when uh, molecules have a lot of electrons in, in general, so that means that uh, in addition to ionizing a valence uh, electron, and uh, you can also you know, excite inner electrons to uh, you know, excited molecular orbitals. And of course, you produce a hole here that can decay through uh, an Auger process and therefore this process uh, interferes with direct ionization. You also have the possibility to ionize directly from a core orbital, and of course you produce another hole, and this hole again can decay through a J. And, uh, and again you can ionize, and at the same time you can excite one of the other electrons, what is called in the shake-up process, and you can have an OJ decay with shake-up and many combinations of different uh, uh, processes. All of them require electron correlation to uh, be described accurately. That means that you cannot treat the electrons independently. The, the electrons communicate with each other. And that's the reason you have all these interactions. So for many years in our group, we were developing a tool that included electron correlation accurately. In the case of a hydrogen molecule, this is something that we started more than 20 years ago. Uh, but today I will focus on a new development we have performed that uh, basically performs uh, calculations uh, at the same level of accuracy but for much larger molecules, and this is the x code. So in a few words, this method uh, gives you a multi-reference configuration interaction description of the electronic continuum of molecules by solving the, inter the, the, the scattering equations and makes use of a hybrid basis formed by Gaussian and B prime functions. Okay, so let's focus on this, uh, on this method. This is not the only method that uh, you know, exists. Uh, there are others uh, that have been proposed by other people. Many of them are, are here in this, in this room, and so you, you can recognize their names. Of course, the list is not complete at all. Uh, but of course, uh, I mean, probably you will hear about those methods uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming sessions. So what makes our approach slightly different from the existing ones is that it comes from a quantum chemistry point of view. And uh, so we, we take advantage of what is already existing in, quantum, in the quantum chemistry world, and we incorporate what is missing in order to describe uh, uh, resonant uh, ionization or JDK, etc. And the key point is that what we have done is to develop an interface that is uh, compatible with existing quantum chemistry packages so that it can be easily incorporated in those packages and then it can be used to describe ionization, which is something that you cannot do with any of the existing quantum chemistry packages. Quantum chemistry packages are very accurate to describe bound states, the ground sta the state and a few excited states of the molecules, but not the ionization continuum. And the key point also is that we, uh, we, we, we try to keep computational cost at the same level as that required to evaluate bound states at the same level of theory. Okay, okay so far uh, our, this code can, uh, can give uh, single ionization. It's not yet developed to describe 
uh, more than one electron in the, in the continuum. So all the applications I will show here refer to single ionization. So the major problem when one has to deal with quantum chemistry uh, codes is that one has to satisfy a scattering uh, boundary conditions. In a molecule, ionization is always a multi-channel problem. So your uh, continuum uh, electronic wave function has to satisfy uh, boundary conditions, incoming boundary conditions that are well known. And of course, this cannot be done by just diagonalizing the molecular Hamiltonian. So as I said, what we did, what we did is just to take uh, what is good from both sides, from the quantum chemistry world and from the scattering world, to combine them. In quantum chemistry, for those who are not very familiar with these uh, kind of methods, like, uh, for instance, Molka small pro packages that are, are you know, widely used, all those packages make use of Gaussian functions to describe you know, the electronic wave function. And this is very convenient because it allows for a very efficient and rapid evaluation of two electron integrals, which are the relevant ones to describe electron correlation. And they are standard in all quantum chemistry packages. However, these functions are very unsuited to reproduce oscillations of uh, continuous states. You know? So they cannot give us the correct uh, asymptotic behavior of continuous states. On the other side, we have scattering methods. So scattering methods make use of uh, different uh, functions, for instance, bispline functions or discrete variable representation of the continuum. And this uh, allows us to describe these oscillations uh, in the asymptotic region. It also uh, leads to sparse matrices that are very convenient to use in, uh, in computations. But unfortunately, if you want to calculate two electron integrals, by using uh, these planes centered on different atoms in the molecule, these integrals are extremely hard to perform, and it's a computational bottleneck. So we combine these things through a closed coupling expansion to avoid the complicated parts on both sides, and this is the way we do. So basically, we write the uh, continuous wave function of the molecule as a superposition of short range states that can be bound states, or multiplex sided states in which there are several holes in the molecule, and continuum channel states. These continuum channel states are written as an anti symmetrized product of a channel function and a continuum orbital that describes the electron in the continuum. And this channel function is nothing else than a state of the cation multiplied by the spin and angular momentum of the ejected electron. So we have to calculate the different parts here by using different methods. For the short range states, there is no secret. We can use directly what is available in quantum chemistry because these are bound states. In the case of uh, multiplex sided states in which there are you know, several holes, still you can use quantum chemistry packages by using different tricks uh, to avoid variational collapse, but this can be done. In the case of scattering states, then uh, well, you have to solve scattering equations, of course, and for that, you have to describe the channel wave function, which is a state of the, of the cation. And again, this can be done by using quantum chemistry, so nothing, nothing new. And in the case of the uh, continuum uh, wave function, we use a hybrid uh, basis of Gaussian functions and bispline functions. This hybrid basis is, is formed by, one, uh, by Gaussians defined in a single center, it can be the center of mass of the molecule that are rather diffuse and allow you to cover, you know, a, a large region of space, but of course they exponentially decay after some time. And the other part of the basis is uh, constituted by B splines that uh, start to be defined at the radius R0 from the center of mass of the molecule. So this is a key point, as we will see later. They don't start at the origin, they start at the given radius R0 in such a way that the B splines and the monocentric Gaussians overlap in a rather large region of space. And that is, that is very important. Let's see how, how we build these bases. The, the dots you see here represent uh, you know, the nuclei of uh, an arbitrary molecule. So the first thing you do is just to define Gaussian functions on different centers uh, of the molecule in this way. This is done by the quantum chemistry part of the code. And then we add our monocentric uh, uh, 
um, basis of Gaussian functions that are very diffuse, so they allow us to reach uh, longer distances from the center of mass of the molecule, but of course, as they decrease exponentially, they are practically zero beyond a given radius R1. And then we introduce the bisplines beyond a radius R0 that must be smaller than R1. So bisplines overlap with the monocentric Gaussian functions between R0 and R1, and beyond R1, we only have bisplines functions. Okay, so the advantage of defining the gaps basis in this way is that the, the matrices we have to deal with contain different blocks, and some of these blocks are zero. For instance, all integrals involving short range states or involving the uh, cationic states multiplied by the monocentric Gaussian functions can be evaluated by using quantum chemistry packages if you uh, know how to do it, and which is not uh, trivial, but you can do it because you have to cheat the quantum chemistry package to do what you want to do and not what the quantum chemistry package wants to do for you, okay? <laughs> but this can be done, and in fact, this is the part that took us longer to implement. And some people here in the audience uh, know what I mean. Uh, now, the advantage of uh, putting B splines beyond a radius R0 is that there is no practical overlap between the B splines and the short range functions, which are the uh, ones that are described by Gaussians. The only integrals you have to calculate between B splines and Gaussians are those involving the monocentric Gaussians. And this can be done analytically and very efficiently. So in this way, you avoid calculating integrals between B splines and polycentric and Gaussians defined in different centers. That can be done, but you can do it only numerically, and this is very, very expensive. So in this way, we avoid doing this, and we have zeros here. Okay, just, uh, I will show you a few examples to, to, to see how this works. This is the hydrogen atom, and uh, this is, uh, you know, the exact solution for a particular continuous state of the, of the, of the hydrogen atom. And this is what the gaps gives you, which is this brown line here. As you can see, the representation is perfect. But the interesting point here is to see that, you know, in the short range part, you know, the Gaussians do a very good job. Of course, here the Gaussians start having problems. And after a while, of course, you know, they are not able to reproduce any oscillation. And in the long range part, you know, the job is done by the B-splines perfectly. And of course, after a while, you know, they don't represent anything simply because there are no B-splines below the radius R0. So interestingly, what you can see here is that what the Gaussians cannot do, because they are not flexible enough to reproduce these oscillations, is compensated by the B-spline functions. In this region where Gaussian functions and B-splines overlap. So the monocentric Gaussians the role of these uh, uh, functions is used to connect the short range part with the long range part that is described by the beast planes. And uh, again, in the hydrogen atom, so we tested how accurate uh, we, can, we can be with this uh, kind of basis. And here I show an example for multiphoton ionization of the hydrogen atom compared with the numerical results obtained by other authors. And as you can see, the agreement is perfect. Okay, so the first thing we wanted to do is to reproduce what we knew to do before. Like, for instance, photoionization of the helium atom. And here you can see a comparison between a full B-spline calculation, which is nearly exact, and the result that comes from our x code. And as you can see, the agreement is very good, and we uh, represent very well you know, the uh, funnel-like structures of these resonances in helium. We also benchmarked our code in the hydrogen molecule and calculated the photoionization cross-section in a wide range of photon energies, and we got, again, very good results. And, and finally, we uh, used this code also to calculate uh, photoionization of uh, many electron atoms as neon, just to, to check how, 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 how good it is. And here you see a comparison between our results 
and experimental data, uh, and, and for this comparison, I like to emphasize that there was no rescaling of the cross sections that uh, came directly from uh, our code. I have to say that uh, uh, calculating uh, wave functions of an atom by using a molecular code is not an easy task, so I, I, I don't, I'm not selling this uh, <laughs> as a competitor of existing codes for atoms because you had to work uh, with yeah. D2H symmetry and you know, I, I don't want to tell you the details of how to deal with the angle, uh, angular momentum algebra you know, <laughs> in D2H symmetry. So, I mean, for me, it's not very obvious. Anyway, let's go now to uh, molecules. Uh, our first uh, application uh, in a molecule with uh, containing more than two electrons was uh, nitrogen. So nitrogen, you may think that is a problem that is uh, solved and well known, well described, well, not at all. Here you can see uh, experiments for valence uh, uh, ionization of nitrogen from the HOMO, from the HOMO minus one, and you know, uh, comparison with existing uh, theoretical calculations. And you can see that, well, the agreement is far from being perfect, even in the region where you don't expect that electron correlation plays uh, an important role because we are at high photon energies. So we wanted to study this region here where electron correlation is expected to, to be very important. So this region, in this region, uh, you may ionize an electron from the HOMO orbital, from the HOMO minus one, and from the HOMO minus two. And these are the channels that are open in this problem. So we can access a sigma u and pi u symmetries, starting from, from the ground state. And these are, as I said, the different partial waves contributing to these symmetries. And these uh, lines here, horizontal lines, represent the resonances you can expect that lie in this region of the electronic continuum of nitrogen. And these are our results. Uh, in this region that is uh, shaded here between the uh, second and the third ionization threshold, we focused on this region because uh, there was a recent interest in understanding the, the characteristics of these resonances. And these experiments were done by the group of Mark Bracken in Berlin by using atosecond pulses. So these are the results. Now you can see a good uh, gauge invariance, but the important thing is to see how this compares with experiment. And as you can see here, you know, uh, these are synchrotron radiation experiments and these are experiments performed uh, with auto second pulses. The agreement is very good. There are some discrepancies here, but uh, not in this case where the agreement is much better. And again, I want to emphasize that there has been no rescaling. I want to illustrate the fact that if you don't describe electron correlation very accurately, then your result is totally wrong in this region. For instance, if you neglect correlation between different uh, channels, then you get uh, this curve over here. If you neglect a little bit of correlation in the description of your cationic state, then you get the other curve here. And as you can see, the resonances are very poorly described. So any little mistake here you know, uh, uh, deteriorates the result very, very much. Now we are studying uh, photonization of oxygen. Uh, here, the initial state is a triplet, so it's much more complicated. And the number of channels is much, much uh, uh, bigger. I will not go into the details, just show the comparison between you know, our results and the experimental data. As you can see, uh, the agreement is, uh, is good, so the method works for this uh, oxygen molecule. Uh, this is a blow up of this uh, region over here where you see the presence of many, many, many resonances. And, uh, and I, I, I think the only uh, calculation uh, that is available in the literature was performed a long time ago by Robert Lucas and collaborators. I have uh, scanned this figure from his paper. Of course, this was obtained more than 20 years ago. But, you know, uh, well, the resonances are there. Of course, we see many more because uh, we, you know, we did this calculation 20 years later. But this is to, to show that the method works very, very well. So we tried a, a large molecule, I mean, for me, for my standards, um, uh, which is pyrazine. And here's the spectrum we get for pyrazine. So, um, and well, we see again resonances. We get a very good gauge invariance. And, uh, and well, unfortunately, there is no experiment here to compare with. But uh, well, we look uh, uh, at all the molecules to see. And uh, the very last thing, just uh, 30 seconds, if this, uh, okay, okay, sorry, it was too fast. Why is it too fast? Uh, 
I don't know why it takes so long. Okay. And uh, now what we are doing is just to do some dynamics with uh, these uh, continuum uh, uh, states that we, we calculate. So we are doing EUV pump, UV prop in nitrogen. So that means that you have to calculate the ionization continuum at different uh, internuclear distances. And then, well, these are our preliminary results that compare with the results obtained by Marcus Drescher in, in Hamburg. And well, we are uh, evaluating this now. But the, the comparison is very promising. So in conclusion, I have to say that uh, we have merged successfully existing ab initio multi-reference quantum chemistry methods with a state-of-the-art scattering theory by using a hybrid Gaussian and B-spline basis set. And, um, and well, we hope that this, uh, this method will be easily implemented uh, in most quantum chemistry packages so that we can really describe ionization in many molecules. And so far, we have applied this method to diatomics. And we are working on water, and I have shown we are working also in, in pyrazine and other molecules. And of course, uh, this work has been done by several people, in particular by Marcus Klinker, um, who is still in Madrid, Carlos Marante, who is now in Berkeley, Luca Argenti, who is now at the University of Central Florida, and is, uh, is around, and uh, Ines Corral and Jesus Gonzalez Vázquez, and more recently by Pedro Fernández. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention.